Everybody with me? Okay. All right, guys. Yes, we talked about solving. What was the biggest thing with solving? Once you get x equals, what do we need to do? Plug it back in and make sure the denominator does not become what? Zero. Okay, good. Today, we're going to talk about finding the inverse. What does the word inverse mean? Opposite. Opposite. Okay. So, let's talk for a second here. If I say f... Hold on. If I say f of x... What is f of x a fancy way of saying? Y, right? f of x equals y. When I say f of x, that's the same thing as saying y equals. So we are going to solve an equation to find the inverse, which means opposite. So let's first talk about inverse notation. If I have f negative 1 of x, this is called inverse notation. So when you get your final answer, it has to have this f negative 1 of x in the answer. I'll show you that in a second. Now, here are the steps to solving to find the inverse. Step number one. Write these down. You're going to replace f of x with the letter y. Okay? We already know that. Step number two, and this is the most important step. You're going to switch the places of x and y. And number three, you're going to solve for y. Okay, we're going to replace f of x with y. We're going to switch the places of x and y. Did I say salt? All right, so here we go. It says, consider the function, blah, 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 find the inverse. So what is step number one? Switch f of x to what? y. So y equals 2 over, and I want you to put this in parentheses, x plus 3, to remind yourself that that is stuck together, correct? What is step number two? Switch the places of what? So I'm going to put x here equals 2 over y plus 3. Just using different colors so you can see. Do you see how we switch the places of x and y? And now, what's the step number 3? We're going to solve for y. So I want to get y what? All by itself. So we're going to solve for y. We want to get y by itself. So think about this. This is over 1, right? <clears throat> what's the first thing I would do? Can we cross multiply? Can we multiply both sides by y plus 3? y plus 3. You guys see that? These will cancel, right? So I have x times y plus 3 equals 2. Don't worry about distributing or anything like that. We're trying to get y all by itself. So how would I get x to move to the other side? That says x times y plus 3. So what would I do? Divide, so divide both sides by x, okay? So then I have y plus 3 equals 2 over, whoops, x. Then what's the last thing I would do? Subtract 3, perfect. So y equals 2 over x minus 3. And to make sure that my <coughs> answer is in full, 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 function notation, I replace y with my inverse notation. So f negative 1 of x equals 2 over x minus 3. Now, the beauty of finding the inverse, I want you to compare your original to the inverse. Look at this. You can do this every time. In my original, in my original, do you see how I had x plus 3? In my inverse, do I have a minus 3? You guys see that? In my original, I was dividing. It was 2 over the whole thing. Here I have just 2 over just this. You can always go back and say, oh, it's, almost, it's the exact opposite from one to the other. So if you get in the habit, guys, of doing exactly what I said, we're going to do another problem here. And then if you want me to do one or two from the homework, I can't. Or if you guys just want to wait till Monday, and that's fine as well. But I have replace f of x with what? Y. So y equals 1 over x minus 2. 
Now what's the next step? I'm going to switch x and y. So x is going to go here equals 1 over y minus 2. Now think about it. We're trying to get y all by itself. So what's the first thing you're going to do? Add 2. Perfect. So x plus 2 equals 1 over y. Now what? I'm going to times both sides by y. Perfect. So, so those cancel. So I have y times x plus 2 equals 1. I'm trying to get y all by itself. So what do I do? Divide both sides by? Perfect. So y equals 1 over x plus 2. And how do I write that in perfect function notation? f with a little negative 1 of x equals 1 over x plus 2. And there you go. Now compare. Do these look like they're opposites of each other? They sure do. Now, guys, when you write your function notation, it's f negative 1 of x, not f negative 1 of x. Do you guys see the difference? It's a little tiny negative 1 up here in the exponent. A little tiny negative 1 up in the exponent. It's not this. But the biggest thing to remember is f of x is a fancy way of saying y. Then you have to remember to switch the places of x and y. And then you just solve for y. Questions? All right, guys, look, we're going to do 41. This is from part two. This is from 7.5 part two. I want to do <clears throat> just two of them, 41 and 43 with you, just to kind of get you in the hang of it. So first step, what do I do? Replace f of x with y. So y equals 4 over 11 minus 2x. Now what? What's my next step? Not yet. Hold on. What do I have to switch? You got to switch the places, God bless you, of x and y. Once you switch, remember, inverse means opposite, so you're going to switch. Once you do that, then you can go ahead and start solving. So how do I get rid of this denominator? What did we do the last two? When we had a denominator, what do we do? Multiply both sides by the denominator, right? <clears throat> Number 41 on part two. Now what do I do? How do I get x by itself? Or what do I do? How do I get y by itself? That's what I'm trying to do. How do I get rid of the x is what I should have said. I have 11 minus 2y times x equals 4. What do I do? I'm going to divide x out. Good. So I have 11 minus 2y equals 4 over x. Now I'm trying to get y by itself. What do I do? I'm going to subtract 11. Perfect. So this becomes negative 2y equals 4 over x minus 11. And then what? Divide it by negative 2. Let's divide by everything by negative 2. So I have y equals 4 over x minus 11 divided by negative 2. Now, that doesn't look super. Can somebody grab the door, please? That does not look super, does it? No? Do you guys agree that we're dividing fractions, per se? Can we keep, change, and flip? Thanks, babe. 4 over x minus 11 times, when I flip this, this becomes what? Divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by negative 1 half. Do you guys agree with me or no? If you want to just leave it in the pink, that's okay. I don't think it's super, but if you want to do that, you can. But if you're going to distribute this negative 1 half... This says 4 over x times negative 1 half. What happens here? 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 over 2x, right? So this becomes what? Negative 2 over x. And then a negative divided by negative is a positive. So I have negative 2x plus, and then you just leave it as 11 over 2. I would rather... 
I would rather you guys, I want this to be two. I would rather you guys simplify it this way. If you get to this point, it's a 10 point question, probably take, I don't know, three or four points off. I would rather you simplify it fully. But the main thing from this lesson that you guys have to practice is to remember to find the inverse. You're going to switch the places of X and Y. That's super important. Let's do this last one and then I'll stop talking. So y equals 1 over x squared plus 4. So now what? What do we do? What do I do first? Switch the place of x and y. So here we go. Okay, we're trying to get y by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is minus 4. Perfect. So minus 4. So I have x minus 4 equals 1 over y squared. Okay, now what? Times both sides by? Y. y squared, perfect. So you have Y squared times X minus four equals one. Now what? I wanna get Y by itself. What's the opposite of Y squared times something? Divided by, so divide both sides by x minus 4. So I have y squared equals 1 over x minus 4. I did this for one, a specific reason. How do I get y by itself here? Take the square root. If I take the square root, guys, what I want you to understand here is I have y equals, if I have a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, anything that's even, when you take an even root, what goes in front of your plus or minus, perfect. And you can just leave it as one over x minus four. If you have an even root, if you're taking the even root, if you're taking the even root, you have to have a plus or minus in front of your answer. How could I rewrite this so it's in super duper, super duper perfect form? What did I miss? What did I forget to do? Yes, f negative 1. Since we have the inverse, it's f negative 1. Don't forget your plus or minus. And then there you go. Okay, you guys okay? All right, so part 1 and part 2 of your homework is there. It's ready for you guys to work on. Work on it this weekend. The quiz review is posted. You can work on that as well. Monday, Tuesday, we'll go over the review. Wednesday's our quiz. Sound good? All right.